Lecture 5, Histology. So we will start off by talking about membranes very quickly. Then we'll go into muscular tissue and our last type of tissue, nervous tissue, and close the chapter with a little about uh, um, dermal layers and cancer. So membranes that combine epithelial sheets uh, plus underlying connective tissue proper uh, that's what we refer to as uh, certain types of membranes. So we have cutaneous membranes, and a cutaneous membrane refers to the skin, and you have both the epidermis, epi means above, so you have the epidermis and then the underlying dermis. Then you have mucous membranes or mucosa. Mucous membranes line every hollow internal organ that opens to the outside of the body. You have serous membranes or serosa. These are slippery membranes lining the pleural, pericardial, and peritoneal cavities. And we uh, studied those cavities, uh, the pleural, pericar pericardial, and peritoneal cavities in chapter one. The fluid formed on the surface is called the transudate fluid. And then you have synovial membranes, and synovial membranes are the membranes that line joints. So here you can see examples of, in picture A, you have the cutaneous membrane, which is the skin. In picture B, you have mucous membranes. Uh, the mucous membranes are the mucosa of the nasal cavity, mucosa, mucosa of the mouth, esophagus lining, mucosis, mucosa of lung bronchi. And then you have the serous membranes. You have the parietal peritoneum. You have the visceral peritoneum. Then you have the uh, parietal pleura and the visceral pleura refers to the lungs, and then you have the parietal pericardium and visceral pericardium, the membranes that surround the heart. Our last, not our last, our second to last tissue type is muscle tissue. Uh, muscle tissue, there are three types. You have skeletal muscle, cardiac muscle, and smooth muscle. So muscular tissue, uh, it's a contractile tissue, and it's composed of cells that are, are called muscle fibers. And if you remember from uh, biology and basic chemistry, you learned about protein fibers called actinomycin. So actinomycin are the muscle fibers, and uh, they are the protein filaments, and it's the interaction between actin and myosin that accounts for movement of muscle tissue. Uh, there are three types of vertebrate muscles. They are the skeletal, the cardiac, and the smooth muscle. Our first type of muscle is skeletal muscle. Skeletal muscle is also called voluntary muscle um, because it, uh, it's a, mostly associated with voluntary movement. So in the description there you see that skeletal muscle, it's long cylindrical multinucleate cells and they have obvious striations in them. Uh, the function, it's voluntary movement uh, for locomotion, manipulation of the environment, facial expression, and voluntary control, and location. Uh, in skeletal muscles, it is attached to bones and occasionally attached to the skin. So uh, skeletal muscle is attached to the bone via tendons, and then typically it is just attached directly to the skin. So if you look at the, the striations in the skeletal muscle, those striations are caused by the actinomyosin filaments. So when a uh, skeletal muscle contracts, the muscle shortens, and it would move such body parts as the arms and the legs. Uh, the contraction of that skeletal muscle uh, is generally under one's conscious control. So that's why it's also called that voluntary muscle. And what we see is the skeletal muscle fibers, which are cylindrical and quite long, uh, sometimes run the length of the muscle, and uh, they arise during the development of several cells fusing, resulting in a, one fiber with multiple nuclei. So that's why it's multinucleated. And the nuclei are typically located at the periphery of the cell, uh, just right inside the plasma membrane. So if you look, in a lot of these tissues, the, the nuclei are near the periphery or outside of the cell, kind of like your peripheral vision is to the outside. Um, the striations, or what gives it those striped appearances, would be the actinomyosin filament fibers. 
and it's those fibers that will give skeletal muscle its strength. Now the next type will be the cardiac muscle. Um, these are branching striated, generally unnucleate cells, and they're interdigitate at specialized junctions called intercalated discs. Um, the function is as it contracts, it propels blood into the circulation and its involuntary control. So if you look there, you see the, the nucleus, you see the intercalated discs in the picture. Um, cardiac muscle is only found in the walls of the heart. Its contraction pumps blood and accounts for the heartbeat. Cardiac muscle combines features of both smooth muscle and skeletal muscle. Um, like skeletal muscle, it has striations, but the contraction of the heart is involuntary. So we don't need to think about this uh, think about this muscle contracting. It just happens on its own. Although the use of uh, relaxation therapy uh, does enable some people to consciously slow the heart. Uh, the contractions of, of, uh, of the cardiac muscle is uh, inherent and rhythmical. So it beats in rhythms. And, and often when you get a, if you would listen to the heart, you hear that lub dub lub dub lub dub sound um, so that cardiac muscle contracts and and you get that rhythm to it and it's modified by the nervous system so the, the nervous system would have a, a play in the contraction of the cardiac muscle so even though the cardiac muscle fibers are striated the cells are different from skeletal muscles in that they have a single centrally placed nucleus unlike the uh, skeletal muscle, which the nuclei are in the periphery of the cell, and it's, uh, many of the cells are multinucleated. Um, the cells uh, are branched and seemingly fused with one another, and therefore it appears that the heart is composed of one large interconnecting mass of muscle cells. And what you do see here, it's, it's uh, uh, the cardiac muscle cells are actually separate and individual, but they are bound end to end by that intercalated disc. And it's the intercalated disc is where you have these uh, folded plasma membranes and these uh, folded plasma membranes between the two cells uh, is where we find one of those uh, cell junctions called an adhesion junction and the gap junction. And what these allow, these adhesion and gap junctions uh, that, that are found within the uh, cardiac muscle, they will permit extreme rapid uh, spread of contractile stimuli so that the, the fibers contract simultaneously. So they'll contract together. So you get that rhythmic beating all together within that one muscle. So that is cardiac muscle. So it's, it's, it has both features of uh, smooth muscle and skeletal muscle. Now, smooth muscle uh, is the last type of, of muscle tissue. Uh, it's spindle-shaped cells with central nuclei. So there, again, we do not see the nuclei on the outside, and it has no striations, and the cells are arranged closely to form sheets. The function of skeletal muscle is that it propels substances or objects uh, and uh, along internal passageways, and it's an involuntary control. It's mostly in the walls of hollow organs. So smooth muscle, because it's mostly in the, the walls of hollow organs, is also referred to as visceral, V-I-S-C-E-R-A-L. It's also referred to as visceral muscle, because here we get that smooth or visceral mus muscle mass, and we, we don't have those striations, because the arrangement of the actin and myosin do not give the, the appearance of those cross striations. So the cells are spindle-shaped labor, yeah, labors, layers um, that allow for a thick middle portion of one cell is the opposite of the thin ends of an adjacent cell. So you might get a thick end of one cell adjacent to the smoother end of another cell. And uh, what you get is the nuclei and you get this irregular pattern in the tissue. So smooth muscle is not under conscious control and is said to be involuntary contraction. So smooth muscle is found in the walls of hollow organs and structures, 
such as blood vessels, intestines, stomach, uterus, and urinary bladder. Um, this muscle, smooth muscle, will contract uh, more slowly than skeletal muscle, but can remain uh, contracted for a longer time than skeletal muscle. Uh, smooth muscle, uh, it can contract uh, rhythmically on its own. The contraction can be modified by the nervous system. And if you think of, of smooth muscle in the intestine, uh, intestinal smooth muscle co muscles contract in waves, thereby uh, helping to move food along the lumen or the central cavity of the intestine. So remember that the lumen is that open space there. Uh, when the smooth muscle of blood, ves blood vessels contracts, the blood vessels constrict, and it helps regulate blood flow and blood pressure. Our last type of tissue is nervous tissue, and we have the neurons and supporting cells. Uh, nervous tissue is found in the brain and the spinal cord, and it contains specialized cells called neurons. So if you look here at, at nervous tissue, uh, neurons are branching cells. Uh, cell processes that may be quite long extend from one nucleus uh, containing a cell body, also contributing to the nervous tissue. Um, they are, are non-irritable supporting cells. Uh, the function is to transmit electrical signals from sensory receptors and to effectors, uh, muscles and glands that control their activity. So in this we have the brain, spinal cord, and nerves. Um, we do call a, a, a nerve cell or neuron, um, basically uh, uh, the specialized cells called neurons will generate and conduct nerve sig signals and a neuron has three typical parts. It has a dendrite which receives sing signals that result in, uh, may result in nerve impulses. You have the cell body and if you look in the diagram you can see it's the larger areas. Uh, the dendrites are, are, are these things out here. Um, those, uh, the cell body, uh, contains the nucleus and most of the cytoplasm of the neuron. And then the last part would be the axon, which conducts nerve impulses. So the, the large axons are called fibers. So you have the nerve fibers. And in the brain and the spinal cord, the fibers form tracts. Outside the brain and the spinal cord, the fibers are bound together by connective tissue to form the nerves. And the nerves conduct impulses from sense organs to the spinal cord and the brain. Um, and this sensation, this uh, phenomena is, is what we refer to as a sensation. <coughs> uh, we'll look more at the nervous system later on. Uh, the last thing here is a little bit on, on immunity and uh, cancer. Uh, basically, immune takes longer and is highly specific. Inflammation is nonspecific, local and rapid. Inflammatory chemicals, signals, uh, or signs of inflammation include heat, swelling, and redness and pain. Um, there are two types of way to have uh, tissue response repair. Uh, that would be regeneration of new tissue or fibrosis or scarring. And that fibrosis scarring would occur when there's severe injuries or uh, cardiac and, and nervous tissue. Here you can see where the tissue layers come from. So the blue layer, if you look at these are the three germ layers. The three germ layers in development are called the ectoderm, mesoderm, and endoderm. Um, it is the ectoderm that will give rise to nervous tissue and epithelial tissue. The mesoderm or mesoderm, pronounced either way, uh, will give rise to muscle and connective tissue. And lastly, you have endoderm, which also will give rise to uh, epithelial tissue. And then lastly, tumors. Uh, neoplasms are abnormal growth of cells, and you have adenoma, carcinoma, and sarcoma. Adenoma is when the neoplasm of glandular epithelium is benign or malignant. Carcinoma is cancer arising in epithelium. It's 90% of all human cancers. And sarcoma is cancer arising in mesenchyme derived tissue, um, connective tissue, and muscle tissue. Have a great day.